thank everybody for uh, participating in this. What I want to show you today is how the quality assurance and special inspection requirements for masonry correlate with the structural design provisions and how we can easily tie the two together to make an effective quality assurance program that's uh, going to be well understood in the field. And as Maria said, this uh, presentation is broken up into three different segments and each segment is naturally um, intended to, to help the uh, uh, user. The, our learning objectives today are to understand the history behind masonry quality assurance. Masonry quality assurance didn't just start yesterday. There's a long, rich history behind the development of it. It goes back as far as World War II. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the ancient history and a lot more of the recent history and how it is maturing into something that we can not only easily understand but also apply. We also need to know the code requirements for minimum quality assurance and when and where we should raise that minimum level to suit our project. We need to be aware of the critical components of structural masonry. That's the last segment that I have in this presentation. You know, what is important, and I think we all have a pretty good sense of that, that is we want to get the structural system not only designed but constructed so that life safety is not going to be a concern. And then we, we need to have the ability to develop a, an effective quality assurance program. The code now requires us to uh, develop and uh, post a quality assurance program for the project, but that's a lot easier done than it seems like. It seems like a daunting task at first, but there's already tables in the code, and all you have to do is reference those tables, and there's your quality assurance program. So it's not something you have to develop individually for the project. You just have to reference the project to a particular part of the table, and I'm going to show you how to easily do that. Also, as I mentioned, it's broken down into three parts. The first part is going to be the code requirements, the history, how we got to where we are today. The second part is going to be to develop a quality assurance program, what we as designers are obligated to do so that we can develop a clear message to the field so that they can effectively carry out the quality control aspect of the quality assurance program. And then the part three, of course, is to what to look for in the field, the uh, critical components of masonry and how to design them. And I'm going to give you that bonus that I just mentioned, the quality assur assurance program simplified, how we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we can just reference what's already in the material standard to be our quality assurance program. So as I mentioned, the history of, uh, of uh, quality assurance goes back in the Uniform Building Code back to World War II, 1943 to be specific, and then it's uh, matured into the IBC, the International Building Code, and also uh, more, more recently it's been transferred over to the TMS 402 document. TMS stands for the Masonry Society, and it's the same document as some people refer to as ACI 530. Uh, that's, that's a different story why ACI has bowed out, and now it's a masonry-only document. Um, and then the critical components, of course, we want to be aware of those so that we can design and make sure our quality assurance program is right. Reinforcement, of course, is an absolute critical component, and to make the reinforcement work, grouting of masonry is essential. If, the, uh, if there's a lot of voids or cracks in the grouting, the reinforcement, of course, is not going to do its job. And that's one thing that in the field, often they try to skip through some uh, necessary code required steps in the grouting process, such as a consolidation and reconsolidation of the grout. That's extremely essential, like it's extremely essential in concrete. And then one thing we've learned recently, and when I say recently, I mean over the past 40 or 50 years, is how important connections are such as roof connections to the uh, masonry wall or even the concrete wall, we found out that if we don't have a positive connection, when we get a hurricane or a seismic event, uh, there can be sudden catastrophic failures, collapses, and those can be very dangerous, particularly if the building is occupied at the time. So we want to avoid that, and we can. And also the right specifications. I'm going to give some examples of some project specifications that I pull, both from the Division Four side of it, the architectural side, and the structural notes. And I'm going to I'm going to play lawyer, I guess, and shoot holes in them and, and say how 
or how much is in there and how much is in there that's unnecessary and conflicting with not only the perhaps the other side of the documents, the architectural and the structural notes might conflict, but it also might conflict with the masonry standard or the code itself, and we want to avoid that. And then at the end, we'll have some thoughts about moving forward and how we can uh, make our documents better, more clear, more concise to convey a better message because when we have a clear message for our quality control and quality assurance, we are going to have ultimately a better project in the field, and that's what we're, we're here for.